In the last episode, we covered the Siege of Jinshu, which was the last major battle of that year. And in this episode, we're actually going to review what's happened so far in the war in the year of 1592. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. The Japanese had gathered at Nagoya in April of 1592 and made preparations to send their forces over to Korea and take it by force. You see, Toyotomi Hideyoshi was determined that he would invade Ming China, replace the emperor there with their own emperor, cement clan Toyotomi's legacy, and keep the samurai of Japan so busy that they wouldn't be able to start another civil war. Before the war had began, though, Hideyoshi had actually tried to convince the Koreans to join him in 1591. But due to many factors, chief of which was Chosun Korea's loyalty to the Ming, these talks actually didn't lead to anything. And even though the Koreans should have made preparations for invasion, they just didn't take the Japanese seriously. They did, however, warn the Ming Chinese of the Japanese threat, although they did this much later than they should have, which made the Ming very suspicious of the Koreans. On May 23rd, the Japanese under Kanishi Yukinaga landed at Busan, and half of the Korean Navy was sunk by its own commanders in the fear of the Japanese. And on the 24th, they laid siege. The Japanese would take Busan and the nearby fort of Daraijin quite easily and on the very next day, they would take Dongnei as well, and would continue onwards until they had taken Taegu as well. Kato Kiyomasa and his army would be the next to arrive in Korea on May 28th. Kato was enraged at Kanishi Ukinaga due to the fact that the original plan was to wait until the three main Japanese commanders, Kanishi Ukinaga, Kato Kiyomasa, and Kuroda Nagamasa had all landed, and then they would march along predetermined routes at the exact same time. But Kunishi wasn't doing that. You see, he wanted as much glory as possible. In response to this, Kato Kiyomasa pushed his forces forward, crushing all resistance in his way until he had actually caught up to his rival, Kunishi Ukinaga, at Chengju on June 6. There, he planned his revenge by letting Konishi face the Koreans alone. But it backfired once again when Konishi was able to defeat the Korean forces. On the 8th of June, the Korean king Sanjo's son, Kwang Hai, is crowned the successor to the throne. And then on the 9th, the royal family leave from Seoul in fear of being captured by the now rapidly approaching Japanese. The Korean citizens, in response to feeling abandoned, riot and burn down half of the city. On the 12th, the Japanese take the capital, Korea, Seoul. The soon-to-be legendary naval commander Yi Soon Sin leaves his home port of Yusu on the 13th with 39 warships. He then meets up with Wan Kyun, the naval commander who had sunk most of his fleet. The 16th was a very busy day as it saw the arrival of Japanese commander Kuroda Nagamasa and interim commander Yukita Hidei. Yi Soon Sin's fleet reaches Akpo where they find Japanese ships anchored in the harbor, and the Korean royal family reaches the city of Pyongyang. The very next day, Yi Soon Sin sinks around 50 of the enemy's ships. And while all this was happening, the Japanese forces had pushed forward on land, and on July the 7th, they defeated the Korean army at the bow of the Imjin River, and they take Kaesong. The next day, Yi Soon Sin sinks around 12 Japanese ships, and the 9th saw him sink 21 at Dangpo. On the 12th, he sinks a further 26 ships at Danghangpo. The naval commander was indeed a very busy man. 
On the 19th of July, the Korean king flees from Pyongyang and desperately makes his way towards Yongbyon before the Japanese could reach the city, which they do and take on the 24th. Two days later, on the verge of breaking and seeking asylum in China, he meets with a Ming force of around a thousand soldiers, and they escort the king to the town of Wuju and reach the town on the 30th. Kato Kiyomasa also heads towards Hamyang. After understanding that the Koreans were indeed in danger, and by extension themselves also in danger, the Beijing courts of the Ming decide to commit fully to lending military aid to Korea on the 8th of August. The 10th of August, Yeo Ki meets with Yi Soon Sin and Wang Kyun to practice naval formations. And through the 14th and through the 15th, they battle the Japanese fleets at Hansan Island. And during this time, Ming Zhou's Zhu Sheng Zun and Dai Xiaobian arrive with around 3,000 soldiers at Weiju. And Japanese General Kobiakawa Takakage fails to take the Jola province. Hey, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks. August 23rd, the two Ming generals attack the Japanese-held city of Pyongyang and are defeated by the defenders. September 12th, a meeting was held by several of the Japanese generals and interim commander Ukita Hidei. And I would like to go into detail about what happened in the meeting, except, well, nothing came of it due to Kanishi being, well, difficult. Kuroda Nagamasa begins his attack on the town of Yonin on the 3rd of October. The next day, a Ming envoy named Shen Wei Jing meets with the commander Konishi Yukinaga. And during these talks, a 50-day armistice is signed. Though this is actually simply a ploy to stall the Japanese while the Ming deal with domestic issues at home. Once this was dealt with, the Ming intended to focus their entire attention on the Japanese invasion. The 5th of October, Yi Soon Sin takes the combined Korean fleet and attacks the Japanese fleet anchored at Busan. He does manage to destroy around 100 to 130 ships, but fails in his mission to completely destroy the Japanese fleet and is now forced to retreat. The next day, Kuroda Nagamasa pulls from the town of Yonin, having failed to take it. Also happening in the month of October, Kato Kiyomasa takes the Hamyang province, and 3,000 Korean defectors join the Japanese forces in the area. One of the defectors hands over the Korean princes Imhai and Prince Sunhua, and were actually well taken care of by the general. He then took his forces, along with his new Korean allies, into the land of the Jurchens, and after a successful battle, retreated back into Korea before his forces could be overwhelmed by numbers. During this time, Nyarhasi, the leader of the United Jurchen tribes, makes an offer to the Ming Emperor to send soldiers to Korea to aid them, but is actually rejected due to past tensions between the two peoples. November 13th, the Japanese miserably failed to take Jinju in the southern Gyeongsan province. And finally, to close out the year, Shen Weijing returns to Kunishi Yukinaga on December 23rd to tell him that Beijing courts would no longer negotiate with the Japanese until they had retreated all the way back to Busan. They had finally dealt with their issues back home, and now, well, the Ming no longer needed to stall for time. On the 29th, without discussing it with anyone else, Konishi tells Shen that they would if the Ming gave them the rights to trade ports along China's coast. And this was rejected by China. And that is the year of 1592 in the Imjin War. Whew.
A lot has happened so far, and I wasn't even able to mention everything. So, what so far has stuck out to you about this year? Tell me down below, and let's discuss it together. In the pinned comment down below, I'll actually give you a thought that has been in my mind, and I'd like to discuss that with you too. And if you've been here since the beginning, and even if you haven't, thank you so very much for watching. And of course, see you next time.